So I don't have internet. Why? Well, don't question it. After all, I was going to have to cross this off the bucket list eventually. The point is, I've been way too connected. I ask Alexa something every two minutes instead of thinking for myself. There are like 30 questions swirling in my toilet bowl of a brain already. So to take my mind off of it, what better of a time to do a review of a game I haven't played in months than right now? That's correct, there are none. Start video. Okay, here's how this is going to work. I've got the game's entire soundtrack downloaded to this iPod and my memory. That's it. Get comfortable and prepare for a train wreck. Wow, that doesn't make any sense. Launching the game for the first time, this happens. This is so cute, and it gets you hyped up for the adventure to come. The main story begins by going into Peach's castle and yada yada you meet your partner and go through baby's first game mechanics. After you play out the introduction for a bit, the game decides to throw you right into a <coughs> battle. There's so much to unpack about these battles, but let's just start with the music. Oh my gosh, the music. Every time I hear it, I just wanna... And I mean it. Most battle themes fill you with anxiety or put you on edge, but this one has funk and just makes you wanna dance. I could talk about this song all day, but instead, let's talk about gimmicks. Every Mario game has its gimmick nowadays. Odyssey has captures, Color Splash has painting, Mario Maker has... Mario making? U Deluxe has... Th this... But this is what Origami King gets. It's a wheel! Better late than never, I guess. This is how battles work here. You spin and shuffle the rows and columns until you get the correct pattern. Spreadsheets have never been this fun. Jump on the lines and hammer the groups. It's pretty satisfying to get things right, and absolutely infuriating to get things wrong. After a while, the puzzles get pretty repetitive, and it gets pretty easy to land excellent hits almost every time. However, the game successfully mitigates the repetitiveness by changing how things look and sound depending on what area you're in. The mechanics are the same, but the vibes are different. Also, when you're figuring out your turn, the music changes to a thinking version. Every game should do this. It's such a simple thing that makes the entire experience so much more enjoyable. It's not like they need to do anything difficult. It's literally a matter of turning off two instruments in whatever software they're using. I mean, I guess it's a little more difficult to do with the live ensemble, but it's possible. When it's time for a boss battle, everything gets flipped on its head. You are on the outside of the circle, and the boss is in the middle. Using the arrows and abilities on the rings, you've got to chart a path to get a hit in. This is... fine. It's not great, and it feels like it could be a lot better with this layout. There's nothing here that uses patterns like regular battles, it's just some brain training. But, all in all, the battles are fine and there are enough unique bosses here to make it fun. There are four Valumental battles which put you up against some giant origami animals, and six League of Stationary battles. Oh god, it's a stapler. Boss battles are weird in this game. It feels like you're constantly flipping between fighting things that fit in with the origami vibe and just... objects? I mean, look at this. They slapped a logo onto something I can find at Office Depot. Nothing else in the game is like this. These bosses are the only things in the entire game that are real-life objects. Obviously, each has their own unique gimmick to match what tool they are, but you only start to see signs of their existence when a toad walks up to you and says, Oh boy! Sure I'm glad I didn't end up like that guy! I wonder what happened to him! It sure is mysterious! Hello! You know what? That's a perfect segue to the characters. 
everything is toads. Toad here, toad there. This guy is literally just a toad with a hat on. This guy is just a toad with a coat on. And I would not be surprised if Olivia was just another folded up toad. You know, I would have said that this is laziness. With so many unique characters in some of the earlier Paper Mario games, this must have just been the team getting lazy, right? Nintendo, what is your deal? Apparently, the devs of Paper Mario were not allowed to make new Mario characters or even to modify old ones, which means that the only thing they were even allowed to do Mario-wise was put a coat on a toad. What? The only new characters in the game have nothing to do with Mario. Olivia, Ollie, and the office supplies. That's all they could get away with. Everything else just looks like a standard Mario character with no discernible changes. But what they lost in character design, they made up for in writing. The classic Paper Mario charm is still here, with witty lines and meta humor unmatched in any other Mario title. Well, maybe Hotel Mario. Get off of my cloud! It's been one of those days. The game made me laugh several times per area, and that's an impressive feat considering most of the characters look like this. Hello! And again, despite the bottlenecks that the writers had to endure, the story of the game is still pretty sweet. Five streamers, five portions of the map. It makes for a simple yet satisfying interconnected story. You rarely have to backtrack and there's always something new to see. The scenery is epic and the plot is good enough. You can kinda tell they were stressed to one-up, no pun intended, color splash. And they really poured their hearts into developing the characters that they could. Your friends go through hardships, some of them actually die, and by the end of the game I felt just about the same way I did after my goldfish died. It's such a wild ride, and it's instant, seamless fun from the moment you start playing, unlike Sticker Star, which young Brady picked up and then immediately quit when the world map popped up. Ah! The only gripe I had with the story was in the scorching sandpaper desert, where you kept having to go back and forth between each area on fetch quests. The game spent more time loading than I did on my math final. But the rest of the world kept things small while still being able to hide plenty of secrets. No spoilers, but the final boss is both exciting and disappointing. When I beat it, I was like... That's it? I don't think I game overed once for the final fight, and I definitely can't say the same about the other boss battles. My hunch is that they had an extra boss phase in mind, but scrapped it. Also, there's no bonus content to do after you beat the final boss, but to keep things non-spoilery, all I'll say is that it makes sense. There's no way they could have continued the story with how the main plot ends. You get a nifty star on your save file, and it boots you right outside the final boss area. That way you can go back and 100% the game if you want to. Paper Mario The Origami King is a great game that stumbles a couple of times by only introducing a few new characters and having battles that are nifty at first, but wear you down after a while. The game was my favorite of 2020, and is probably my favorite RPG of all time, too. Wait, is Paper Mario an RPG? Alexa, is Paper Mario an RPG? I'm having trouble connecting to the internet. Oh yeah. I can't take it! I have too many questions! Have the Olympics started? Who are the new Mii Fighters? How many subscribers do I have? How's Bitcoin doing? Did Good Times with Scar actually comment on my video or did I just make that up? Has any new tech been announced? Is it gonna rain tomorrow? Has the graphics card shortage ended? Is Paper Mario an RPG? Well, I guess that's another thing I get to cross off the bucket list.